biasa inilah dia waktunya Jepret tim balik lagi di Jepret Talks dan kali ini Valentino Jepret Simanjuntak kedatangan tamu yang spesial kita juga kemarin sudah membocorkan akan ada siapa hari ini dan orangnya sudah ada di hadapan kita saat ini bahkan sudah dibocorkan oleh kamera ya padahal saya tadi mau memberikan kejutan saya Valentino Jepret Simanjuntak saat ini kita berikan tepukan tangan yang paling meriah please welcome Raja Nenggolan dan Sabrina Dressler tepuk tangan dong guys 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 Mamat kamu bilang kamu lebih baik dari Jepret Before interviewing Raja dan Sabrina, saya udah interview David Beckham, Michael Owen, Marco Van Basten, Ruth Hulit, Liverpool, Manchester City, semua udah saya interview. Kenapa kamu bilang kamu bilang lebih bagus dari kami? Kamu itu bukan siapa-siapa. <laughs> Jerry, 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 Jerry. Kamu juga pengen pamer kamu pakai bahasa Inggris ya. Saya juga bisa bahasa Inggris walaupun belepotan, oke? Okay? I think you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because I saw in uh, Sport 77, they ask with in, in 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 Bahasa, but you can answer in English. Yeah, but there was a, uh, a translator. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 good at editing, right? Yeah. <laughs> but how are you? It's it's good in Indonesia. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm happy to be here. I think uh, I'm having a good time. It's a little bit heavy because it's always from one place to another. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm having fun. Yeah. I'm not gonna ask you about the meaning of your name, your family name, because it's already thousand times people ask about it. I already met you like 10 years ago. Now you look more mature. Eh? Yeah. What do getting you think? Old. I'm getting old. I say mature better than <laughs> getting old. How about yourself? I'm good. Uh, yeah, I changed a lot of things uh, in 10 years. Um, because 10 years ago, It's like the transition Cagliari to Roma, yeah. to Roma yeah. and then you make the announcement after exactly. went to Indonesia yeah. and then you become a superstar. Yeah, everything changed after that period, yeah. Maybe I had to come back in between five years, you know. Uh -huh. But at the end, yeah, past ten, ten years because it goes quite quick. Everything goes quick in life, you know, the career goes directly. When, you, when you're playing seasons, you're always busy. And before you know, a season is, is done, so... No, there were a lot of changes because I was just playing Cagliari. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if I came maybe playing for Rome, things were maybe even different. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy that I'm now here and yeah, like I said before, I'm trying to have a good time. Yes, you, you always say trying to have a good time. You also want to, you know, do your hobby. You find your happiness. You still happy now, right now? I'm always happy. Always happy, yes. Always. Of course. Small things in life makes me happy, so that's yeah. really important. <laughs> Sabrina, waktu dikasih tahu bakal bareng Raja untuk jadi punya peran dalam Under 17 ini gimana waktu itu? Ya, aku cukup senang banget sih. Soalnya legendary player and I think the only Indonesian player, half Indonesian player yang pernah main in championship and in Europe especially. So it's a, it's a big Obviously, it's a big honor to play uh, to be ambassador with Raja. Um, but yeah, aku excited banget dan senang sekali. And after like few days with Raja, what do you think about him? He's a really nice guy. Really? <laughs> he looks scary on the outside, <laughs> 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 but he's a very nice guy. And yeah, senang seru kalau diajak ngobrol. All right. Yeah. And now Indonesian have, for my opinion, is like two good results, draw in the two games. I predicted it. Huh? Yeah, but I predict same like you. It's gonna be three draw, right? <laughs> One point each. At least you can say we didn't lose the game. Yeah. And it happened. Like last night, we also drew with uh, Panama. Mm -hmm. Even we already conceded goal, but then we can overcome. It was with, a good reaction. With yeah. our striker, with yeah. the reactions. And I read in the media today that you have contribution for that. For what? Because your motivational speaking, because your experience. No, just what said, about that? I was just talking about my experience. You know, like if I knew that a team was better than my team, and I think Indonesia needs to know that they are like the smallest team in the World Cup because it's just there because of they organize the tournament. But um, if I was playing against a better team, you need other weapons. You know, you yeah. need to make uh, you need to make uh, you need to make use of of the crowd. You need to make use of uh, 
yeah, you're playing home. And I think yeah, yesterday it didn't start that good. I think first half only Panama played. Mm -hmm. But if there is a reaction, it means that they know that something was not going how he wanted sometimes to go. And yeah, I think 1-1 uh, is a good result. Two good results and maybe, yeah. Uh, the thing is, when you, when you are less strong than the other team, you need to go for the win. I mean, if you play only defensively and then you come behind 1-0, like maybe yesterday happened, it becomes difficult to go over. And now, if they want to pass, they have to win because mm -hmm. with a draw, I think you're, you're not passing. So, I think they need a little bit more courage than, than the two games before. Uh, because we're going to play Morocco. with Morocco. That's a and Morocco problem. already beat with Ecuador. So maybe the players like having a confidence for that. The Mar get yeah, but yesterday they lost. Yeah, they the, lost. Yeah, the Morocco lost. Yeah, so they, have to, they they cannot lose. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. they lose, they're out as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can see the face of uh, Ecuador and also like Panama players mm -hmm. when the final whistle throw with Indonesia. They they just like. <sighs> yeah. How did we draw against them? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. But, but this is football. Huh? But that happened in football, right? Yes. I, it happened with me a lot as well when I played in. In the team, we were second at the end of the season with Rome. I lost against Empoli, I lost against Spezia, I lost against small teams. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, it's a lack of concentration. And sometimes when you think you're a better team, the other team puts something else in that you're not maybe prepared to, you know. And that's what I'm saying about Indonesia, I think. They need to put something else in. I mean, it's not only the honor, the proud. There's a lot of other stuff, you know. Sometimes you tackle hard. Um, but I see they are giving it all. They're giving everything and yeah, the results are there. What do I get as Ri? Do you also already predict like Raja that <laughs> we're gonna have two points in the two games? Well, kayaknya my prediction tuh ngasal banget. <laughs> so aku belum pernah lihat Indonesia main kan. Dan aku udah dari kemarin udah tahu tim-tim yang udah datang itu emang qualified for the World Cup. And Indonesia cuma uh, masuk because we're tuan rumah, right? So yeah, we both didn't know how Indonesia was playing. But he guessed right, I guess wrong. So. Not, not, not just two of you. Lots of Indonesian people also don't know <laughs> how we can play. But before, uh, half of the players in, in the World Cup is already won the F F5 Cup for under-16. Uh. This players? Yes, with the same coach. And yeah. I'm the commentator ah, okay. and the host for the game. That's why I also know about... Yeah, but this is a World Cup, but it's different. But this is the World Cup. But, but, but so you're playing against... Ecuador, that was the yeah. runner-up in Copa, Copa America. You're playing against yeah, Morocco. is yeah. always a good team with young teams because a lot of talent players. So it's difficult to be to, to, to see Indonesia in a contest like yeah, we need to beat Morocco, we need to beat Ecuador, mm -hmm. you know. But I just say draw because I think yeah, like like I predicted, I didn't know they would play like this because they they kind of play quite good as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they make good actions, good running moves, but I mean. Uh, I just say draw because of, I think, um, playing home, it gives something, you know. This yes. is the first time a big tournament on a World Cup for the country Indonesia. So I said, yeah, okay, they will give it all. And yeah, let's say they will not lose, they will not win. So we stay in the middle. And at the end, it's like two draws. <laughs> but it's still, there are lots of criticism mm -hmm. about our uh, plan game, about my, f my, 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 my best friend. Bima Sakti, the coach, and I'm just saying that we also have to see the results. In your opinion, is it the most important thing is the result or the it's how not, we play? It's, it's not the result. We said it other times as well. Uh, I think it's not about the result. What is the outcome? If they win or they, they will lose. lose, I think they have to make proud of people. And if you fight for it, I think I was loved in, in Rome because of how I went on the pitch, you know, if they see the, the shirt all sweaty at the end of the game, they said, okay, yeah, he gave it all. And I think this is something to be proud of, not only how good I, how good did I play, how bad did I play, but did I give everything? Mm. I think this is more important for as the players, as the fans. Did I give, did I give everything? Yeah. That's the most important I think that's thing. the most important thing. Because you need to be proud to be on a World Cup, you know. So giving everything, it says, okay, yeah, they showed that they wanted to, because you cannot say, yeah, okay, you cannot say from, yeah, Indonesia has to beat Morocco, Indonesia has to beat them, they need to, 
be realistic, you know. Mm. And being yes. realistic means okay, Indonesia can, I think, on the on, if you need, if you need to bet, you know, no one will bet on Indonesia. They will always bet on the other team. Yeah. So you need to be realistic with this, and I think yeah, if they get two good results, I think the people can be proud. Mm -hmm. And how how about the crowd? You already saw about the crowd. I think there are no country in this world that like for under 16 they watch by 40,000 30,000 people I mean is it is it good for like under 16 players or or, or maybe the opposites it's, no, it's, it's good it's pressure. good because when they become I hope they all become football players it's difficult because it's easy to say okay you're playing the World Cup now it's the moment to, to put themselves a little bit mm. in the in the vision of everyone yeah but I think um, having already this crowd, because we saw even the Brazilian, the, the Brazil game, there were like 4,000 people, yeah. nothing. That's a normal S average scorpions. for a game as under 17, you know? Yeah. But when you see 30,000 people uh, watching at the stadium in Indonesia against Ecuador, you would say, this is not possible, you know? Mm. And under 17, I think it never happens. Mm -hmm. So that means that the people is proud to watch them. Yeah. And I think this is important. and. Playing already with the, with all those um, people watching you and supporting you, I think it makes it more comfortable because you know there's people behind you. You know you have to give something different. You know if it's all quiet and yeah. annoy annoying, so it it doesn't give nothing to players. Which is the most noise supporters club that you play? Roma. Roma. Yeah. Not the club after that. No, because Inter was always full. You know. But the 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 difference of um, how do you say how hot the the, the 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 crowd is from Rome was something different. So like yeah, I remember the game against Barcelona. We lost four one. Then we beat them home three zero. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. never felt yeah something behind like they gave it. Yeah, yeah. So that was the biggest point in my career where I said, wow, this was an atmosphere complete. Um, everything was there. The crowd was there, we did it, uh, everything was perfect, you know. So these are things that stays there. In Inter, okay, it was always full, 70,000, uh, singing the whole game. But it's not the same thing as giving you the vibration, you know. Mm -hmm. Kalau Sabrina sendiri sekarang, kalau pengalaman melihat supporter Indonesia buat sepak bola wanita ya, lebih banyak mendukungnya, apa lebih banyak nyinyirnya, apa lebih banyak yang lainnya? Mm. Pengalaman kamu. Yeah, I think supporting see mm -hmm. usually Don't be I, afraid. You can <laughs> you can honest. <laughs> yeah, it's even lah. Even. Semua agak sama. Tapi aku juga enggak pay attention to people yang yang aneh-aneh gitu. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. In the end semua orang bakal say something, right? If you're in your put in the public eye, of course some everyone's got to say something. It's only whether you want to hear it or not. Mm -hmm. So aku enggak terlalu peduli in si Ya, yeah, you know lah, cowok kalau lihat cewek, kayak nggak pernah lihat cewek sama sekali. So it's like, ya, yeah, I cannot say anything, but ya udahlah, it's up to them. Eh, kita tunggu juga ya, supportnya sama kan, di luar juga kan buat sepak bola cewek udah banyak banget yeah. yang support kan. But, ya, yeah, just like you said, Raja, that maybe this is like the first time and we don't know when Indonesia become the host of the World Cup again. So we have to put our heart and also all of we got that that to, to, to play uh, but we have like um, this kind of situations like young players in Indonesia is really good I mean in, in Asia for for young age until like 16 but then after that like under 20 and then the senior team they got behind from the opponents that they play when they 16 and 12 is that because of the structure or or what if if you can give the opinion of that yeah i don't know it's about if it's about structure or not i think you know when you play always ah, you, have, you don't have to see it only in indonesia it's everywhere you know when mm. you grow and you become a man like from a kid to a man it's around 16 17 18 19 years old you know when you play always with the same age with when i'm 15 i played with against 15 years old guys 16 the same, 17 the same, then 18. When you go then to the first team, you play against people that is 10 years older. So that is where you need to beat mm -hmm. the, the, the concurrence, the, the, the fear of playing against bigger guys. 
I don't know if in Indonesia it, it's a question of only mentality or maybe too much respect to the opponent. To the op opponent, I don't know. But I think it's worldwide. It's a question of worldwide. A lot of players they arrive at the under 18, under 20, then they have to go to the senior team. Boom, they're done. They don't arrive because there is too much difference. So it's not only about uh, is it in Indonesia or something. I think yeah, I talked about structure uh, more um, about being competitive. You know, there is not a league for women. There's no competition for younger guys. So I think this is more important to make structure that you need you need competition even when you're young. So that when you arrive at a certain age, you have the feeling of the competition. And, and that is what is missing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And we hope, we hope Pa Eric Tohir will build up the structure for the under six, under seven, under exactly. eight, under nine every uh, year. And also the women football, because that's what you need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, but, but now we're still growing and growing and, and, and we want to get to getting better. But from your experience, you go from your country to Italy, right? Um, I think uh, you have to have a good attitude, mentality. What you can say for the Indonesian players that want to play abroad? Yeah, that's the problem. There are not a lot of players that go to play abroad. Mm. Um, I think uh, it's more about courage. It's more about mentality mm. because staying in your own comfort zone is always easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you got mom, you got dad, you got friends, you got everything. But I had to make the decision as well. After six months, I wanted to come back as well. Mm -hmm. But at the end, when you want to become something or someone, you need to chase, you need to chase your dreams. And even if it's difficult, it's I think when you pass the first two steps, I think everything goes easy. Do you remember which which part of your life that the most difficult that when you? Going abroad. Yeah, of course I remember. The most difficult was that I left my mom and my my sister home alone. Like I left on my own. I was, for me, my, my my daily life was okay. I went to school. I went to practice. I came home. I was with my with my with my sister and my mom. Leaving and then leaving all my friends behind because I was a guy from the streets. You know, I was played outside. I was with my friends. It was difficult. It was quite difficult because I go to Italy. I didn't know anyone. Yeah. Uh, just arrive on my own, and then you need to, yeah, to how do you say to adapt. Yeah, it's not only adapting; it's to become. Yeah, you need to to become a man. You need to become strong. You know, you it's have Italy to. Uh, hard. You suffer a little bit. You know, Suffering. it's dif it's difficult when you're on your own. But then, playing, practicing, playing, practicing without saying nothing even to anyone because I didn't need it, friends. Because my friends, okay, they were calling and stuff, but. Um, afterwards, you gain respect, and then it's everyone or all the other people that comes to you. So at the end, at the right time, you just do your thing, and you will be respected, and people will come. Kan kamu juga sempat bilang di podcast lain kan, maksudnya kalau ada kesempatan, apalagi untuk cewek main di luar ya main di luar aja, hmm. gitu loh. Tapi kan banyak banyak kendala juga kadang-kadang kan segala macam segala macam. Apalagi misalnya banyak kan followersnya di sini gitu. Yeah. Kalau kamu gimana tuh? Ya, pas aku pertama kali join nama klub itu susah banget soalnya aku sampai aku belum pernah kasih tahu ke siapapun. So this is probably the first. Aku setiap kali habis latihan nangis. Oke. Okay. Soalnya pressure-nya tinggi banget dan susah kayak dia bilang dapat teman aja itu susah banget. Apalagi kalau kita baru kan aku baru pindah ke Australia, nggak punya teman, nggak tahu siapa-siapa terus Ya, main bola biasanya tuh Jakarta itu banyak temen, kayak keluarga gitu, terus pas pindah ke Australia nggak punya temen, nggak apa-apa, so it's very different. And ya, yeah, sempet pressure-nya tinggi banget, and it's very susah. Lebih kayak cowok sih, cewek di situ. <laughs> kayak badannya gede, kuat, lebih cepat, lebih pintar, it's hard. So I had to adapt, tapi ya, yeah, I, I could do it, I played a year season. Uh -huh. It was hard, but it was challenging, and I, aku masih push through. Kalau orang Indonesia kan agak uncomfortable, mau balik pulang, nggak bisa lagi. Tapi aku tahu, aku harus kuat mental, dan kalau aku bisa do this, I can do anything else. Wow, keren amat ya. But in Indonesia, sometimes they just not, uh, they have dad, mom, and friends. They also have like millions followers that bring glory for him. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That, that one of the one of the things that they have to consider. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Oh, we, to leave the we talked about this as well once. <laughs> because I mean, okay, you get your fame in, in Asia, Indonesia, but in Europe, in the bigger leagues, no one knows you. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
so they get comfortable with the with the mindset from okay uh, I'm famous okay yeah my career is okay you know I arrive yeah uh, I got my fame uh, I got everything I need but at the end you're just playing in the Indonesian league mm -hmm. you know it's such a big country it's like you were playing China and then in Europe you know the guys no I don't know them mm -hmm. and yeah I think you need to to go further you know because if you want to become a football player because otherwise you say okay I'm a local star, but at the end of the career, no one knows me. Yeah. Maybe to Arab League now, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe. But we were talking, um, even some of the big players in the national team, mm -hmm. they are second division in Europe, yes. and then they're so big here, so it's, it's crazy. Yeah. The difference is insane. Yeah, what some is the of name them of the young guy that plays in second league in Belgium? Marcelino. Marcelino. Yeah, Marcelino he plays second league in Belgium. Yeah. It's, it's a shit competition. Really? It's a shit competition. Really? Yeah, I'm telling you, it's it's Why? one of the worst competitions in Europe. But okay, he's trying to make his steps, you know. He's a young guy, he's trying to make his steps. And I think uh, it has to be followed by a lot of guys. Because even if it's second league, at the end you come from Indonesian league. Indonesian league, I think, it's not a difficult league. If you go to the second league in, in, in Belgium, and you're maybe the biggest star in Indonesia. Yeah. You know, you go to the second league in Europe. I think a lot of people are saying, okay, yeah, he's making his steps, he will have his career. But it's difficult because when you're in the second league in Belgium, mm -hmm. to getting up to the first league in Belgium, for then going out, maybe it passed over the other four or five years. Really? Of course, it's not that easy. Because in Indonesia, they put the red carpet, Marcelino, come walk in, you can go, yeah, you know? Yeah, I'm afraid in that Belgium, also happened in with... In Belgium, it's not like this. And I mean, like, I will not even... I hope not because I hope he ha will have the biggest career in his, uh, of, of all the Indonesian players. Eh? Because I hope everyone uh, gets the most, uh, the maximum uh, out out everything. But this can be a reason that he says, "Okay, I'm in second league in Belgium. I don't get the same attention like I get in Indonesia. Maybe in two years he's back in Indonesia." That's why you say that there is suffer the time, the mentality, and he can. He can he can do the stepping stone, and, and he can even second. say, okay, I stay maybe five years, yeah. and if I arrive, it's okay. If I don't arrive, I can always go back, you know. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, you need to keep going. You need to keep going. That's a difficult thing, I think. Yeah, dan sesulit itu kan, Sabrina. Yeah. Apa I godaan? Lu kesini aja. <laughs> yeah. You get you can get more followers, yeah. more money than the. In, I think in because they're right also now. comfortable here. They're already big name. Yeah. If they get paid. Yeah, I don't know how much they get paid, but pretty good, I guess. And they're really comfortable, so if, even if they go to Europe and they fail, they have something to fall back on. Maybe for Raja, Europe was Europe. Like, that was yeah. something he really wanted to do. It's like you have, you have, you have set your own goals. Yeah. Exactly. What do you want? So he no, really like focused. Five years. I wanted to become the best football player in the world. Even if I knew there were a lot of better players, but my mentality... Say, say it like that. My mentality was, if I had to play against Messi... Wow. There's a lot of players that go to Messi, they watch him while Messi, yeah, but yeah. me, I don't care, I tackle Messi, you know what I mean? No, that's, that's no, but, it yeah, yeah, that, yeah. but anyway, but that's my mentality because yes, yes. I'm not afraid of no one. Yes. We're playing the same game, okay, maybe you got more quality yeah. than me, but you have to show it, you know? Yeah. I yeah, yeah. That was my mentality. Even I, I heard that you also don't fret with Totti when you're in Rome. That you don't? That you don't afraid with Totti. I mean, no, yeah, no. You respect him, but I, I came, I came to Rome. I said, like, yeah, it's difficult to go to Rome because I come from a small team, Cagliari. Okay, it was first league as well, but I go to Rome and I said, like, wow, Francesco Totti. You know, <laughs> 25 years in the same club, 37 years old, big name. He won the World Cup. I said, yeah, okay, but let's go. We go. Yeah. And yeah. the thing that I got respected by him because now we are very close friends, very oh, good really? friends. Yeah. You know. Uh, I got respected by him because I'm not watching anyone in the face. You can be Francesco Totti, you can be God, you know what I mean? <laughs> if you want to play football, you have to play football. And yeah, that's, yeah. That was what, that, that's what I call the winning mentality, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, okay, he kicked me. He thought, oh, it's Francesco Totti, I will not kick him. I kicked him as well, you know? Really? <laughs> and, the then, and then he said, ah, the guy is not talking, <laughs> but he's hitting. <laughs> So that g gains respect, and yeah, we became very good friends after all. Wow, 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 yeah, yeah. I think also Indonesian people uh, give much respect to his seniors. I mean, yeah, it has to be, but not in the field, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, now we're going back to the Under-17 World Cup. That You already go to the uh, Surabaya, the yeah. GBT Stadium. Uh, what do you think about <coughs> the stadium now in Indonesia? 
Uh, yeah, what do I think about the stadiums? They are like still a little bit old, I, I mean, the, the structure. Mm -hmm. But um, it's not easy to get everything new, you know? Yes. It's not possible to get it from one year to another. But I see developments that are going well. I see, like, they show me the even the sports center of, uh, of Bali United. It's very, it, I think it's very nice it's as well. It's new, yeah. So the stadiums will come later. And then, you know, why the teams are saying, like, why do I uh, renew a stadium if it's not mine? Mm, yeah. You know, I will never owning. I will never um, take in a house from someone on loan and change everything I did. If it's my house, I will change it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more mentality of this. If everyone gets his own property, I think things will be better. But it's not for now. I think it's for a little. Bit. But the organization is really good. Uh, I think uh, they organize everything well. Um, I don't can complain now. Kalau di sana bagus ya Australia stadion stadionnya. Bagus. Oke okay, ya. Yeah. Tapi kalau di sini kamu pengen banget pengen di stadion apa? Jis. Atau ya GBK lah. Oh Jis atau itu belum? belum? Belum. Oh belum. Kan kalau timnas saja ya yeah, nothing's happening right now. Liga aja nggak ada. So how can we play? Jadi mudah-mudahan nanti bisa kesampaian. Go back ya. to Australia. <laughs> oh, Australia is not season next yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. Ya yeah, kalau nggak mulai aku. Cari klub di luar negeri. Ya, yeah, I agree with Raja. Ya, yeah, play in Australia, right? <laughs> Instead of standing and just with national team, <laughs> play one year. Yeah, but but now lots of people also go to the stadium, like in Bali, in Solo, in uh, Surabaya, and also Bandung. Yeah, because do you believe that these players that playing in under 17 it's going to be big player? I don't know. I saw Fighters. it a lot of times before. That's a good question because I saw a lot of times before players still. Good. Under 17, under 18, yeah. like being real talents. Yes. But at the end, when they are 25, I don't even know where they are. Yeah. It goes quick, you know, because now they have to be. Uh, it also with your generations. Yeah, they have to pay attention now because when you play the World Cup and you're getting good results, and okay, you know, I showed yesterday Kaka the striker. Yeah. He scored two goals now. Uh, the followers were from 2,000 to 150,000. You know, it goes quick. <laughs> so they that. have to. They don't. They they cannot lose their head. You know. They have to think always like small. They're still young, and this can be a little bit dangerous. Certainly in countries as Indonesia, because Agree. in maybe two months you will get one million followers because Agree. you scored another goal, mm -hmm. and then you need to stay low. You know. Mm, stay low. That's that's the difficulty. I think. Who who is the most important person that have to take care of that kind of uh, situation? The close, the close persons around you. Like agents, I don't know if they got agents because yeah, they're just playing. His Indonesia. parents also former striker. And what? His father is former striker here. Ah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but don't local, know. local, okay. local striker. He has to. He has to. The, I think the agent, if they got an agent, I think the family, close family, family. they have to always getting you pushed to another level. So because otherwise, if they say, yeah, okay, we're good now. At the end, if you get more, it's even better. Yeah, because there's publicity. Yeah. You know, like uh, endorsement, advertising, or something like that. But they, they have to know that they are footballer, right? Yeah. They're not. No. I mean, there was a lot of people that said, okay, uh, I can create an image around me that football is the thing that made me famous. But the thing that makes me famous is once you get in that other world. Mm. If you get in the world about media and television, you said, okay, I point everything on that. And football will stay. Because yeah, it's not that you get maybe the richest person in the world playing Indonesia, but maybe with television and all the stuff, you can even become better than as a football player. So that's a little bit dangerous here. Yeah. So yeah, the the thing that makes difference is playing really good and stay low. Yeah. If they want to improve stay low before you, you can you can get an attitude you know because i think I, I gain my attitude on the pitch as well and outside of the pitch but first of all before you get an attitude i think you need to show people and my attitude came maybe after the second year of rome mm -hmm. because yeah i found myself one of the best midfielders of the league i mm -hmm. found myself one of the best midfielders of europe mm -hmm. and then i get a little bit of an attitude but Always working hard, always giving the max, and yeah, it was always 
growing every day by day, day by day it was still growing because I wanted it, I wanted more always. And how to handle like criticism, like no, I don't care about bad it. comments about I your, about, 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 this is the, this is the thing that goes off my shoulders, I don't care. But you read about that or no, you just like? I don't like journals, honestly, I don't like to, to read stuff, uh, they kill me a lot of times, huh? mm. but honestly, they can kill me even 10 times more. That's not a problem. It's batak. Yeah, that's not a problem for me, really. Yeah, same with me. Yeah, in the small circle. Yeah, Sabrina. Tapi pemain-pemain Indonesia yang cowok suka DM kamu nggak? <laughs> no comment. Huh? I ask her is the men's uh, players DM the her to the IG. She not comments. It's a yes. Huh? <laughs> Of course. Yeah, but I tell him also I don't care about that. Like, really? Aku cuek banget Kamu mau nggak punya hubungan dengan pemain bola juga? I Sebagai text her as well, huh? I text her as well, but just to appointments. So right. Yeah. So because we're doing everything together. I, I ask her, do you want to make relationship with the Indonesian football player? Yeah, just friends. I'm fine. But if not, I also don't care. Yeah. Yeah, like me and Raja were just friends. That's it. Like it's it's professional. Yeah. Nothing more than just professional. Okay. All right. So uh, we have limited times with the with the questions that I have, but uh, you also said that yeah, watching in TV and also watching in the stadium is different, right? Because the atmosphere and something yeah. like that. And now in our stadium, because it, this is the Under 19 World Cup, we have VAR. Do you think it help for? For me, VAR destroys football. <laughs> really? Because. For the kind of way that I play, uh -huh. yeah, you know, how do you say it? You need to um, need to be a little bit um, busted on the pitch, you know. Need to be, because otherwise, now football is like ballet, you know. Ballet. It's like dancing, Slow. and when you touch, it's like, oh, I've hurt myself. <laughs> and it's not like before. Before it was a real sport, Tough. you know. Yeah, you can yeah. be a little bit. You need Aggressive. to be clever. You can li yes. be. You can punch a little bit. You can hold a little bit. Now nothing is possible anymore. So for me, VAR destroys football, but that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. It helps a lot, but making mistakes, I think the referees, they need to make their mistakes. It's mm -hmm. better to make a mistake without the VAR, but even with the VAR, they still make they mistakes. Still mistakes yeah. So the VAR for me is something that's not needed. Dengerin tuh guys, belum tentu VAR itu membawa kebaikan, karena itu mengurangi esensi sepak bola. Especially uh, kind of players like you, right Raja? Yeah. Playing like... Yeah, no, but I mean, like, when there was a corner kick, you stand on the toes of the other guy. <laughs> or when there was a corner kick, you just give a little elbow so he will not start before you. Now it's not possible. Yeah. You can do nothing anymore. Yeah. So football is a little bit like, yeah, let's say, destroyed about mm -hmm. with this rule. I yeah, think but, it, but it, they just think, I know, you know, the VAR, they, they invented the VAR because of they wanted to make it easy for the referees. Mm -hmm. Because the referees are those that are always... Uh, attacked by media, by, gen, uh, by, by, the, by coaches, by everyone, because they, they always say, yeah, they're bad. Yeah. So they invent something to make it more easier for them. But is it still the same sport as before? No. Mm. Okay. So for me, they are destroying football. Kamu gimana, Sabrina? <laughs> well, obviously, I don't think for Chewe they ever use VAR. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't know, but... Sounds like he's right. <laughs> I guess <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> no, I mean, imagine you score a goal. Uh -huh. You go and celebrate after five minutes video. They said no, the goal is not not uh, not valid. Um, yeah, like yesterday it happened. You know, does it allow? Yeah. So wait, sometimes you 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 celebrate. And then? and then you say, no, the goal doesn't count after five minutes. <laughs> so you go back at the same position as before where the ball was. Sometimes you score. You celebrate, they watch three minutes, yeah, it counts, yeah, and then they go celebrate again. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it's not real, it's not realistic. It's, it's something right. to, honestly, if I would score and the VAR is saying, okay, it doesn't count, and then, okay, yeah, it counts, and I have to celebrate again, I say to myself, what kind of, yeah, I'm, uh, what am I doing? Yeah. You know? I think it's there's ups and downs to everything. So, ada benefitnya, ada yeah. kejelekannya dari VAR ini kan. Okay. So, who is the best friend in football family that you have? My best friend in football. In English is bestie. Best friend forever. 
No, I don't know. Uh, you, you have, I have, I have, you have good one? relationship, but uh, no, my real friends are those outside of the football. Really? Honestly. But I am, I'm, I'm in good rela Listen, they wrote, wrote a lot of things about me that I am like a guy that in the dressing room makes the dressing room a mess. But this is all bullshit. Because bullshit. I still hear people from when I played in Piacenza like 17, 18 years ago. Yeah. I'm still texting, still hearing, still seeing. So I think I'm an easy guy, but you make of me what you want because yeah, yeah. I'm full tattooed and, and <laughs> people have their first opinion about someone. But people that knows me, they know that I'm the opposite of what is written down. But if you can choose who is the... If I can choose, yeah. In Rome, in Inter... But I have, I have a lot of persons that are close to me. I have, I'm close with yeah, Francesco Totti De Rossi. I'm close to Manolas. I'm close to Pjanic. I'm close yeah. to a lot of players. There's a question. Uh, can we give uh, five minutes, okay? Okay, uh, there's a question from the, from the followers asking about what do you think about Rome in this season compared with you in the middle with the Rossi and also Strutman? Because this guy think your generation is the best midfield in that's true. AS Roma. That's, that's true. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes, yes, yes. Because, you know, now when I'm... When I'm when I'm seeing Rome, like, you know, the statistics are yeah. those that are talking about facts. Yeah. And if you see that when I left and De Rossi left and Strodman left, they didn't qualify for the Champions League anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was finished. Yeah. And they still don't qualify. Yeah. Um, I think our team was in general the, be the, the best team of the last 15 years. No, not 15, maybe the last 10 years. Because it's difficult to become a team as we were, you know. Mm -hmm. we, we we went to the semi-finals. We went to the to, to the semi-finals of the Champions League. They won now two years ago the Conference League. But in my time, Conference League didn't exist. Mm -hmm. It's just a new competition. You cannot play a, a European Cup. And for clubs that arrive seventh in the league, mm -hmm. you know, it's a club. It's a cup that doesn't mean nothing. The real cups are Champions League. And Europa League now. Okay. That's the only cups that exist. Mourinho, okay? Uh, I don't know Mourinho. I think he's a very good man. I think he's an honest man. I think uh, he's, uh, he, he's just well uh, a club and, and a team. But honestly, if I see Rome playing, I don't like it how they play. Okay. It's not uh, an attractive football, let's say. Attractive. And Lukaku now is like there. If you see my team of Rome playing and we lost even a game, mm -hmm. after the end of the game, they all said like, yeah, but Rome still dominated the game. Yeah. They, were, they like, were like having 20 shots on goal. But now this team is getting two, three shots uh, on goal, you know, with good actions, mm -hmm. with clear actions. So I would say if I was a supporter of Rome, I would say, yeah, they lost, but it's deserved because they lost, you know. It's not. It, there are a lot of differences. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you you, you acknowledge that your generation is the best, you'll feel. And uh, other questions. Who is the most toughest midfield that you played with? With. Uh, against with. Against Sedorov. Clarence Sedorov. Yes. Why? It was too too strong. Really. Yeah, that's the only player that I didn't touch a ball in a game. Against Clarence. Yeah, he cancelled me from the pitch. You know, he was erasing me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he was too, too. Yeah, his football mind is big. He was an experienced player. Uh, player. I was a young player. Um, he, he was strong physically. He was okay. technically good. He was a complete, uh, complete player. And I think that was the toughest player I played against. Clarence. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Raja, for your time. The last questions. Kita mau lawan Maroko. Kalau kamu melihat bagaimana Sabrina, kamu dulu. <laughs> Kenapa pas pertanyaan yang itu ke saya <laughs> dulu? <laughs> ke dia dulu. Kalau tanya tentang Sidorf, kamu nggak tahu. Um, Setelah lihat dua pertandingan. Ya, semoga mereka menang. Tapi kan Maroko is a hard team. Uh -huh. I feel like everybody knows Maroko itu lebih emang more pengal pengalaman daripada Indonesia. So, ya yeah, hopefully they win. Tapi sejujurnya, I don't think they're gonna win. Semoga. Yang penting ajak untuk pada ke stadion ya, yeah. biar support ya. Thank yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> what can you suggest for Bima Sakti as a coach for Indonesia? That By who? The coach. The coach. Indonesia. Indonesian coach yeah. is Bima Sakti. What advice that you can say to him for the players who will play against uh, Maroko? 
on the third match? Well, what can I say? Um, <laughs> it's difficult to say something because I think they're giving it all already. I, me as a coach, in his place, I would be proud already now. You know. What yes, I mean? me too. So I think it's already a good moment for Indonesia, for Indonesian football in general. Um, but I think the only thing I would that I would say in the dressing room now is like, guys, just, uh, there is one one possibility to make it maybe to the biggest stage that ever happened in Indonesia, you know, going through the first round. So we need to believe in it, we need to try and if we lose, yeah, we're out. If we win, we can go through and then, you know, it's a knockout game then. It's always, always difficult. So the only thing I could say is like, yes, yeah, we need to believe and okay, I'm proud of it. Anything will happen now. So. Yes. If we go through, I will be a proud man. If we're not through, I will be proud as well. So try and, and, and believe. So if Indonesia is true, you will stay in Indonesia for a while. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows this? <laughs> But you optimist? Yeah, honestly, I, I told it even in 2013, I would love to, to know real Indonesian life. Um, okay. There's a lot of interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, I think the people is very kind and polite, and yeah, it's a culture that that that's mine. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, a lot, I know, I don't know a lot about it, but I wanted to know. I want to know it. So yeah, if there is time, why not? Yeah. So uh, maybe you can say something to the viewers to support the Indonesian team. Yeah, well, <laughs> I I think everyone is already supporting. So. The only thing is, we all stay behind the team and we all hope that it uh, becomes to a good end, but otherwise we can be proud as well. Yeah. And no matter what the outcome is, I feel like we should always support Indonesia because even just showing up on the field and being called for the national team is something very big and it's something very good for Indonesia's football and it's a step forward. So. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have some uh, gift that want to give to you both. Maybe you can leak to us which club that you will play. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Honestly, I don't but know. But you still play, right? I'm not without a team, but I want to play. Yeah. yeah. And I'm still in good shape, so... Yeah, yeah. We will see. All right. So, uh, we have a... Uh, please don't mad. If you don't, if you don't like, you just say it. But it's like creati creativity from our team. Yeah, it's nice. All right. There's more Inter than Rome. <laughs> That's why I tell you that. <laughs> Please don't mess. Maybe yeah. you can, you can, you can, you It's can nice. show. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, we have, because I'm from Batak as well, same like you. So, yeah, this is for you. This is the first time I see this, you know? With the name of That's you. Nice. And also the, the, the show. So you can put like scarf or maybe you can put like this. Maybe just like scarf. scarf like this. Yes, yeah. yes. And maybe nice. you can say uh, Horas. Horas. Eh, Sabrina nya mana? Oh, ada mana? Eh, mana lu gimana sih? Sebentar. Let me stand as well. Let me stand as well. Let put on your head as a scarf. Dan ini untuk Sabrina. Terima kasih. Jadi demikian. Oke, okay, berarti mudah ya ngobrol-ngobrol sama Raja Nainggolan dan juga Sabrina maunya mah lebih dari 2 jam, 3 jam tapi nanti kita undang lagi di lain kesempatan tapi yang jelas ini merupakan sebuah hal yang luar biasa Piala Dunia U17 ada di Indonesia kita nggak pernah tahu lagi itu akan ada kapan sukseskan U17 ini karena siapa tahu nanti U20 dan juga senior Piala Dunia bisa di sini juga apalagi sekarang kita sudah punya 2 poin doakan juga supaya kita bisa mendapatkan hasil yang terbaik untuk bisa mudah-mudahan tidak kalah dan juga bisa lolos ke babak berikutnya dan semoga saja semuanya bisa jadi lebih baik lagi dan dia mulai bingung ketika gue mulai mengatakan seperti ini. Dia ngomong apa, dia ngomong apa, dia ngomong apa, tapi gak apa-apa Yang penting kita dukung terus Dan kalau bisa datang ke stadion, datang ke stadion Karena nanti Mas Marcel juga akan kasih tiket ke kita Jadi tunggu aja pengumuman dari kita Untuk memberikan tiket-tiket gratis ke kalian Untuk bisa menyaksikan langsung pertandingan-pertandingan di Piala Dunia U17 Yang ada di Solo, Bali, Jakarta, dan juga Bandung Pokoknya ya ampun, ulalalalala Jepret, sampai ketemu lagi Horas Baik pemirsa, inilah dia waktunya